Hey, what's up? It's Jesko again from AcousticsInsider.com, where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. So let's talk about flush mounting speakers, right? So this is where you basically build your speakers into a wall. Maybe you've seen this around, especially from like high grade mastering studios. And probably if you've read on some forums asking about speaker placement, somebody would have said, you gotta flush mount your speakers. It's the greatest thing in the world. So maybe you're thinking about this right now for your home studio, wondering if you should actually go through that process of designing and building a setup where your speakers are flush mounted into the wall. So that's what I want to talk about in this video. But before I do that, I want to help you out if you are starting a new studio because it can be tricky to know what exactly you need to do to get started. So I created a free workshop for you to follow to walk you through that process. It's the Phantom Speaker Test Workshop that you can sign up to again, completely for free at the link in the description. This is my process to get you started figuring out where to place your setup in your studio. That's by far the most critical thing that you need to get right in any home studio. So figuring out where your listening position needs to go and where your speakers needs to go in order to really get the most out of your room. So this is the Phantom Speaker Test Workshop. It's basically two structured listening tests. You can do this without measurements, shouldn't take you more than maybe an hour or two, and you'll know exactly which side to face in your room, how far away from the wall to place your listening position, how far away from the wall to place your speakers, how far apart and what that stereo triangle really needs to look like in order for you to get a soundstage, a stereo image that is the best it can be in your room. That's the critical part about this. So again, if you're setting up a new studio and you need to figure out where to set up your desk, your speakers, your listening position, sign up to my free Phantom Speaker Test Workshop at the link in the description. All right, so let's talk about flush mounting speakers. And let me start right away by saying the obvious answer here, and that is that in a home studio, you should not flush mount your speakers. The simple reason is that any potential benefits that I'll talk about in a second are far outweighed by the actual benefits of being able to fine tune your speaker position after the fact. But let's have a look at flush mounting in detail first, right? So what does this even mean? Well, in, in simple words, it just means building a wall and putting your speakers into the wall so that the front of the speakers is flush with the rest of the wall. What's the idea behind it? Well, the idea is to get a flat frequency response because there are acoustic effects and there are effects from the speaker itself that happen when you have them freestanding that negatively affect the frequency response. And if you place your speaker inside a wall so that it sits flush with the rest of the wall, you can get rid of those effects. So primarily the one you're getting rid of is speaker boundary interference. And this is where the speaker basically couples with a surface in close proximity. So sound reflects back from a surface, usually the front wall. So in this case, the wall behind the speakers, the sound reflects back, it interferes with the sound leaving the speakers and you get both a bass boost and interference dips depending on the actual distance of the speaker to this wall. And so if you put the speaker inside the wall, you're basically getting rid of this effect entirely. And that's really the only way to properly do that. On top of that, you're also looking at removing diffraction effects. So from the edge of the cabinet, right? So sound can diffract off of the edge of the cabinets and affect the frequency response. And then also the baffle step, where basically if the wavelength is short enough, it only sees the front of the cabinet and is reinforced by that surface. But once the wavelength is larger than the front size of that cabinet, it can basically not get fully reflected by that cabinet anymore. And so there's a step in energy going into lower frequencies uh, called the baffle step. And so these three effects are basically negated by putting the speaker inside the wall, all with the goal of getting a flat frequency response. But here's the major problem with flush mounting, and I'm not even talking about the difficulty of getting the construction right, making sure you uh, find and prepare the speaker the correct way. So obviously we're talking about the, uh, the positioning of the port, the electronics inside, all this stuff. But the main problem that you have with flush mounting is that once they're inside the wall, you can't move them anymore, <laughs> should be obvious. 
And so let's say you're setting up a home studio, you plan all this stuff, and then it turns out after you've built all of this into your room, you need to move your listening position back by a foot, and suddenly the geometry of your stereo triangle doesn't work anymore. So now obviously you need to move your speakers, but you can't. <laughs> or let's say you build all this stuff and then you do your first listening tests and it turns out, you know what? This equilateral triangle should have been a bit squashed. You may have wanted to have your speakers a bit further apart, but you can't change that anymore, right? So that's, in my opinion, what is the biggest problem with flush mounting and particular in a home studio scenario. Because in a, your typical home studio, you will have to make those adjustments. And I actually recommend as you go through the process of treating your studio that you consistently recheck your exact speaker positioning and listening position, even if it's just by a few inches, centimeters here or there. Why? Because when it comes to translation of your mixes, it is far more important to have a great stereo image and a proper sound stage than a perfectly flat frequency response. And sure, if you don't flush mount your speakers, your monitors, you will have negative effects on the frequency response. But these can be compensated to some extent by treatment, obviously, and then also EQ after at the end of the process. But the stereo image, the sound stage that you get you cannot fix with treatment or EQ. The only way to fix that, to get it right, is to get your speaker positioning perfect, right? So the flexibility of being able to move your speakers as you're going through the treat treatment process and you're fine tuning what your system sounds like, that liberty is so important and is far more important than being able to get a flat frequency response right from the start. Okay, so in a home studio, forget about flush mounting your speakers. It's just not the right approach to get the most out of your room and your speakers. You'll lose more than you'll gain and you'll make your life extremely difficult in the process, right? So flush mounting, unfortunately, is really something that we should leave to the big boys as it requires extremely careful planning and very detailed knowledge of what you're doing before you even start building the studio because you need to get it right the first time around. All right, so I hope that removes any last doubts about what it is you should be doing. With that, let's get back to learning to trust our ears, having fun making music in the studio. I'll see you in the next video.